Good evening and welcome to 60 Seconds for Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. I'd like to talk about uh, in-person masses. So I am planning not this coming weekend. Uh, there's not enough time to put all the pieces together. But the following weekend, so the second weekend of June, June 13 and 14, to offer four in-person Masses on the weekend. They will be on the weekend, four in-person Masses. Now I want to begin by saying it's not a return to the way things were. So your patience, understanding, cooperation are appreciated and necessary. You are not currently obliged to go to Mass on Sundays during the pandemia. The bishops have dispensed that. So don't worry about not coming to Mass during this pandemia. The bishops have dispensed that obligation. Vulnerable adults, vulnerable people, period, are encouraged to stay home. So if you are fragile in health, whether it's from the aging process, whether it's advanced stages of asthma or diabetes or whatever, if you're vulnerable, please stay at home. If you have any pre-existing health weaknesses, uh, we talk a lot about the elderly, but to be honest, all the cases I've known in Sunnyside within our parish have been people in their 20s and 40s, so uh, and maybe 50s. Uh, so don't think that age is the big differential there. If you're coughing, sneezing, have a fever, upset stomach, don't say, oh, it's just something else. Don't come. Don't come. Stay home, please. We will continue streaming our masses on the internet. So that will continue 9 o'clock English, 11 o'clock bilingual, 1 o'clock Spanish. I'm not sure about the 7 p.m. one uh, yet because that will be at the same time that we're trying to offer the Mass outside. I'm not sure if our equipment will make it outside. But anyway, we'll still have one English, one Spanish, one bilingual. I'm going to add four outdoor Masses, second week of June, June 13 and 14. Saturday night, 7 p.m. English, Saturday night, 8.30 Spanish. Sunday, 7 p.m. Spanish, Sunday, 8.30 p.m. Probably bilingual or Spanish. I'm not sure yet on that one. In summer, we usually cut the 1 p.m., but I think we'll be cutting the 7 p.m. instead this time because that other mass will be occurring at the same time and I'm not sure about getting the equipment out there. So that's that one. Um, You'll need a ticket, and your ticket will have to have your phone number, your address, email, uh, some ways of contacting you. So whatever you have of those, that information will need to be on your ticket. Each person will need a ticket. Well, each person will need a ticket. But on a family ticket, you can hand in your pack. Let's say there's five in the family. You can hand in a pack of five tickets and just write all the family information on one of those tickets and we'll keep that packet together. Okay. But each person will need to have a ticket. The masses will be in the garden behind the food bank. You'll enter down by the garage, the cyclone fence there. So enter through that gate. Don't try to enter through the church. You'll need that ticket with a phone, address, email, in case there's an outbreak. So one person, one ticket. But you can list family members on only one and hand in that packet together. Each person needs a ticket. If a baby's one day old, that baby needs a ticket. You have a sudden visitor from out of town, they need a ticket. Each person needs a ticket. Everyone must be wearing a face mask during the entire mask. So when you come to the gate, you will have to have a face mask on in order to enter. The only exception is some very small children, uh, although they are still capable of passing the virus on. You will be asked to be seated six feet apart. Members living in the same house or apartment can sit together. But your cousin, your aunt, your brother, your grandma, and so forth from another part cannot be with you. So members of the same household sit together. It'll be a very simple mass, very brief, probably 35, 40 minutes at the most. There'll be no access to bathrooms. There will be no choirs. There will be no singing at mass. There will be no altar server. There will be no children's liturgy. There will no, be present, no presentation of the gifts of bread and wine. 
There'll be no collection basket pass, but there'll be a place to leave your offerings. There'll be hosts for the people to receive communion, of course, but they'll be off to the side of the altar and left there till after Mass. There'll be no sign of peace. At the end of Mass, so the priest will receive communion, and then he will go to his chair, he'll give the final prayer, then we'll hear the announcements, the final blessing, and the dismissal. After that, the priest will take off his chasuble, his vestment, wash with hand sanitizer or soap and water, and will go out with putting on a mask. He will have a mask on as he distributes communion to the congregation. And when it comes time for you to receive communion, you will take off your mask. Hold your hand way out, your arms as far as you can, and the priest will extend his arms as far as he can to give you the host. If he touches your skin or you touch his skin, he will stop communion and go and wash his hands again. There will be no receiving from the chalice. People will not wear their masks during communion. Please extend arms. If you get touched with the host, but the hand, the priest touches yours, you'll have to stop. Then after receiving communion, we would dismiss you by groups. We don't want a hundred people suddenly trying to get through the gate and spreading contagion. Don't bunch up, stay separate. There'll be no holy water in the font. So, I think that's all for right now. Uh, we can't get it going for this weekend. We have to do some training on hygiene and have the supplies for you to sanitize before and after every mass. You're invited to bring your own chair, your own folding chair, that we will also have chairs provided for you. There is a limit of 100 people. There is a limit of 100 people. But at this time of year, our mass attendance drops to about 650. So I think we'll easily can fit in anybody who wants to come to these four masses as long as they have a ticket. Let's pass to the final prayer. Well, it's quite a week in the United States, and now it's becoming worldwide, the protests. So I thought a few prayers uh, from to up, uh, about racism. Racism. It hasn't gone away. We're seeing horrible divisions, and it needs to be dealt with in a Christian way. I was uh, in college in the riots of the 60s, and we kept hearing, well, we've got to be patient with structural change. These things take time, you know. And the chant that came back after so many conversations for years was, if not now, then when? If not now, then when? And the 60s are 50 years ago. So asking people to be patient is not a good option. Be patient as we what lies before us. Good and gracious God, you invite us to recognize and reverence your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism, free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our world, and ourselves. This we pray. Thank you, Sisters of Mercy of the Americas, for that prayer. O oh Lord our God, in your mercy and kindness, no thought of ours is left unnoticed, no desire or concern ignored. You have proven that blessings abound when we fall on our knees in prayer. So we turn to you in our hour of need. Surrounded by violence and cries for justice, we hear your voice telling us what is required, only to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. Words of the prophet Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Fill us with your mercy, so that we in turn may be merciful to others. Strip away pride, suspicion, and racism, so that they may seek peace and justice in our communities. Strengthen our hearts, so that they beat only to the rhythm of your holy will. Flood our path with your light, as we walk humbly toward a future filled with encounter and unity. Be with us, Lord, in our efforts, for only by the prompting of your grace can we progress toward virtue. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you to the universe, 
United States Conference of Bishops. Good and gracious God, who loves and delights in all peoples, we stand in awe before you, knowing that the spark of life within each person on earth is the spark of your divine life. Differences among cultures and races are multicolored manifestations of your light. May our hearts and minds be open to celebrate similarities and differences among our brothers and sisters. We place our hopes for racial harmony in our committed action and in your presence in our neighbor. May all peoples live in peace. Thank you, Sister of the Mercy of the Americas, for that prayer. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all in our troubled nation. Amen. Good night, and thank you for being with us. <laughs>